Hello everyone, this is Boricua Beings and welcome to Let's Play 999. In the last episode, we were working on uh, solving the puzzle in the laboratory with Lotus and Clover. Now because we were separated, that means Clover's going to have to do some stuff on her own and we'll have to communicate with her through the bars. And uh, Lotus proved that she's actually much, much more intelligent than we thought. I mean, I already saw signs of it, but man, she's computer savvy too, so she's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so she was talking more about that whole, our brain is not really what we think it is, it's more like a monitor. Oh god, I'm so yawning. Ugh, I actually walked, got up, walked around for a few minutes to try to like wake up more. This is really annoying. <sighs> okay, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I think I'm only going to record these two episodes today. <sighs> really, dog? Go away. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, well, let's just get, let's get back to this. The program took only seconds to analyze the system. Chunks of text flickered on and off in quick su succession, and then a line of numbers appeared blinked and disappeared. The screen cleared and all that was left was the word accepted. Mm -hmm. Piece of cake. Lotus would clearly have patted herself on the back if it would not have made her look entirely ridiculous. Hey, she deserves it. She worked hard for that. After a few seconds, the accepted disappeared to be replaced with... Oh. Nine squares arranged in a three by three square. What the hell is that? No idea. It looks like a puzzle. I like puzzles. Suddenly, Lotus stood up. Huh? Aren't you gonna, I don't know, do more computer stuff? I can't do any more. It won't let me do any more programming. See the keyboard? Nothing. So there's nothing more I can do. Um, well, I guess I'll leave this to you then, Junpei. What? Let me take a break, all right? I did my part. He wasn't sure what to say to that. She certainly had done her part. In fact, without Lotus, they probably would have run completely aground. I shouldn't rely on other people so much, Junpei thought to himself. From here on out, he told himself he would rely on no one else. Junpei crossed his arms and stared at the puzzle shown on the screen. And yet, in Zero Time Dilemma, Carlos was the one doing most of the puzzle solving. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I, I don't know yet. What? Oh, is it supposed to make the all green? I see. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> Those kind of puzzles are fun. All right, I solved it. Did you hear a noise just now? Yeah, I did. It sounded like something unlocking. Where did it come from? Uh, over there, clearly. Look, Junpei, the lights on the lockers are green. Then we must have unlocked it with a computer puzzle. Yeah, let's get it. Ah. There's more than one key in here. This one is small and looks like it goes to some sort of machine. And this one has the earth symbol on it. I think the earth symbol matches a keyhole in a door on the A deck. Well, if that's the case, we probably don't need the earth key right now. Alright then, earth key. I'll just tuck you away deep in my pocket. Okay, you're gonna talk to the key? That's fine. Now, as for the other key... I know where that goes. Cool. It was just at that moment that he heard a voice behind him. It was Clover. Hey Junpei, do you have a minute? He put the puzzle aside for the moment and walked over to Clover. What's up? I, um, I wanted to ask you something. Hmm? Junpei, you went into door 5 with my brother, right? 
you hear him say, like, anything weird? Why is she asking me this? Junpei wondered. The more he thought about it, however, the more it made sense. Yeah. Snake had been gone for a long time. Clover was quite attached to her brother. Of course she would have been worried about him. Junpei, I worry about you sometimes. Like, you lack common sense. <laughs> He thought back to when he'd gone through door 5, hoping he might remember something, even a small something, that would help her. However... No. Sorry, Clover. I can't really think of anything. I mean, he did mention that his hearing exceeds that of a regular person, or something like that, but... That's about it. Okay. Clover's words were barely audible. She nodded vaguely to Junpei and turned to walk away. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Look, I don't know if I should ask you things, but... If you don't mind, I was hoping you could tell me if... Uh, is Snake? Um, I mean, was he born... You're talking about his eyes? Yeah. No, he wasn't born blind. When he was a kid, he got in an accident. A really bad car accident. He couldn't see after that. And his arm. His arm. There we go. We knew something happened to his arm. Yeah. My brother's left arm is, um, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. Ah. That explains why she knows that Snake is alive in the other timeline. Ah, okay, cool. The accident hurt him really bad. To save him, they... They had to cut off his arm. Awkward. Is that all you wanted to ask me? Talking about her brother had clearly taken a great deal out of Clover. Junpei nodded. Look, I'm... I'm sorry for making you talk about all that painful stuff. Clover only shook her head and walked off down the stairs. Yeah, more information. Okay, uh, now that I have that key, where was it at? It was here. Okay, nice. This key, the shape sure makes it seem like so it goes into this machine. Alright, I'm turning it on. There we go. Okay, the monitor is on now. And it's full of letters. It's showing some kind of warning. Power restored to experimental device. Emergency system will activate in the event of abnormal subject behavior. Okay. Hmm. Um, but basically they're referring to this, what's happening here, I guess. Um, I haven't finished looking here, so. I don't know what kind of table this is, but part of it's all black. There's a pen lying over here. I think someone probably used it to make the table black. Hmm, I don't see that, but okay. Well, if they only use the pen on one part of it, there's probably something underneath all that pen. Clover, do you think you can erase it? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is a permanent marker. Ah, the ethanol. Junpei, do you know how to erase ink from a permanent marker? Erase ink from a permanent marker, huh? Give me just a minute, Clover. I'll be right back. Part of the table's been colored over in black. Okay, if I could find something that could get rid of the ink, I could hand it over to Clover through the bars. I have something. Yes. Uh, okay, I just had to select it. Hold on. Uh, I have something. Ink, hand it over to Clover through the bars. Ah, uh, yes, I just go straight to the bars. Okay, cool. Oh, why are people calling me right now? Leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should have put my phone on vibrate. I usually do. Okay, so uh, let's see. Go through the bars. 
Clover, use this ethanol. You should be able to wipe off that permanent ink with it. What am I gonna wipe with? Oh, well, your clothes, of course. She's mad. <laughs> She's like, hell no. <laughs> kidding, just kidding. Please don't look at me like that. You're scaring me. What? I have to get you a cloth? I don't know. I don't know. Girl? Is this like an examination table? There's a creepy mannequin in here, guys. Uh, is there nothing else? There's something sticking out of the mannequin's head, like wires or something. What the hell were they doing in there? Huh? Why is she all quiet now? They were doing experiments on humans. Probably. Oh man, now she looks sad. Seriously calling me again? Leave me alone. Whoever's calling me can just leave a message. <laughs> um, since I don't recognize the number. Junpei, this thing in here is on now. Yeah, that's because we activated the power over on this side. Could you, like, play with it a little? Okay. Yeah. I'll turn this dial here. Turn, turn, turn. Uh, I don't think it's working. Nothing happened. Well, maybe she missed something. I should ask her to look around the room again. Wash basin. It's a sink. This is a monitor. There are a whole lot of cables under this table. It's a rack. There are a bunch of cables on it. Somebody cut the outer stuff off the cables. I can see the wires inside. My gosh, what do they want? They keep bothering me. I don't know you. I do not know you. Go away. <laughs> okay. Clover, can you use the cloth on the table? Use? Huh? Soak it in ethanol. Oh, there's cloth on the table? Come on, girl. Soak it in ethanol, and then use it to wash off all the stuff from the permanent marker, okay? Right, okay, so I gotta soak the cloth with ethanol. She's stupid. <laughs> gotta tell her to do this and that, huh? Well, she's got the cloth, but she seems to be having a little trouble with the bottle of ethanol. When she's ready, I should ask her to get to work on that stuff on the table. Soak the cloth in ethanol and... Junpei! It's working! It's wiping the permanent ink off! Huh? There's some kind of weird drawing under all the permanent ink. What's the deal with that drawing Clover found? Maybe I should ask her to take another look at the table. Really? I wonder what this is. There are a bunch of numbers and some kind of grid. I can't see it from here. Clover, you've got a pen and a notebook, right? Could you write those numbers down and then hand them to me through the bars? Okay. Roger. Okay, let me get my pen. And that way I can write this down whenever they <clears throat> tell it to me. Stuff on the table seems like it's some kind of hint. Okay, so let's go back to the bars now. Here, Junpei. I wrote down all the numbers from the desk on here. Hmm. I've seen something like this before. A grid divided into nine cells with four numbers. Maybe this is a hint for the computer puzzle? Uh, are you gonna need this? Um, yeah, maybe. I'll take it, just in case. I already solved it, though. I'm confused. Let me see. Uh, Clover's note. Well, we'll see. Hold on. I don't know. Is this for something else that's gonna happen? Come on, pen.
Okay, well, should I go here again? Well, I guess there's nothing in the other eight lockers. Which one was it? It was this one? I don't need the computer anymore. So then what was the point? Did I do all this backwards? Power restored to experiment device? I'm confused. Stand for various places of equipment. Some of them might be useful. Oh, the levers. How about that? That the lever is down now. Not very impressive. I already inserted the key and activated this machine. What else can I do? No? Um, at a loss. Okay, all of that for nothing. Scribbling from the table already. Mannequin lying on the exam table. I can't really see it very well from here, but it looks like there are a bunch of electrodes sticking out of its head. What else am I supposed to do? I'm lost. I'm stuck. Oh boy. I was hoping to not have to look anything up. Let me see. I did. I looked through ethanol. Everything's on. She looked through everything here. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm confused. Oh, here we go, Lotus. Okay, thank you. I was like, I don't know what else to click. Maybe if you increase the voltage. Roger. Will do. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to max voltage. M max voltage? Hey, wait, Clover. Aw, oh, shit. Oh, boy. Wh what? Um, I think, uh... Oh, no. Oh, crap. Oh my god! The, the mannequin's head! Oh man, that sounds like a fire alarm. Gah, what the hell? Fire detected, fire detected. The emergency system will be activated. Evacuate the room immediately. Will that at least get the door to open? Damn, the gate's still shut. What am I supposed to do? No! Uh, I'm freaking out! But we're still in trouble, we have to save her now. Hey! The screen is all red. Malfunction has been detected. Experiment discontinued. It says the emergency system has been activated. Darn it, Clover. Still in trouble. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out what else I can do. This mannequin the size of a human being is on fire. Oh my god. I don't know. Clover's on the other side of this gate. She's in pretty bad shape. What are you doing, Junpei? You need to save Clover now. Is there anything else I can do here? Control device for the electronic door lock. Green light is on. Junpei, the light turned green. Then the lock must be open. We can't just leave, though. We have to save Clover first. Ah, Junpei, look at the light. Yes, it's green. The emergency system is activated. Now we can save Clover. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I didn't know that was the door to the room. <laughs> Junpei! Come on, kid. Jump! She's safe. Oh man, that smoke is some serious business. Time to close this door again, I think. Clover, are you okay? Are you hurt? <coughs> Damn, she's coughing so hard she can't even talk. Cough again. Of course I'm not alright. 
What the hell took you so long, you big jerk? I didn't know that was the other door to the room. I forgot. I was almost dead. Uh, you were the one who started the fire. S sorry, I was going as fast as I could. You two can do this later. Right now, we need to get the hell out of here. That fire is not going to stay in that room forever. The green light is lit. It's got to be unlocked now. Let's go. Okay. Well, that uh, got kind of scary for a second there. Junpei, Clover, and Lotus leapt out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. All three collapsed against the wall, breathing heavily. Junpei's heart was pounding in his chest, and his whole body felt weak. He inhaled gulps of clear air, and with each one he could feel his body begin to calm down. All right, let's go. They nodded to each other and started off down the hallway. Before long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Soon they had tried all of the doors but one. The final door sat in a corner of the hallway. Junpei grabbed the door handle and was about to pull it open when a voice cried out behind him. It was neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognized it. There was no doubt the voice belonged to... Jumpy! Mm-hmm, he spun around. There, at the other end of the hall, Junpei saw human figures running toward him. Three of them. June, Santa, and Seven. They stopped short in front of Junpei and his companions, gasping for air. Ah, Santa. <laughs> you douche. Hey! What are you guys doing here? What? But we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Um, guys, could you come over here? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. Um, okay, the map. A map of the ship's interior. It said Sea Deck in the upper left corner. Most likely, they assumed it was a map for the floor they were on. Mm-hmm. Door 7 and Door 8. The map confirmed what they already knew. Both doors eventually led to the hallway where they had found themselves. In fact... Yeah, isn't that what I said? Till we find that do 9 door, Zero ain't gonna split us up. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we can't open door 9. That's how the nonary game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. As one, they all moved back toward the ju door Junpei had only a moment ago been ready to open. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. Yep, we're going back. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke without looking back at the other five. Ready. I'm gonna open it. They nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. Surprise! <laughs> they poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. They were just where the map had said they would be. The same room they'd been in not so very long ago. The tremendous central hospital room with empty beds from wall to wall. There we go. So, that's going to be it for this episode. I I'm going to try and see how much I can skip because, you know, we've already talked to Ace and all that before. So in the next episode, we will probably pick up wherever um, new material comes up, all right? So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this, and until next time, have a nice day. Bye!